From June 28th to the 30th, Lars Adaktison hosted a conference at the European Parliament entitled A Future for Christians in Iraq Towards a Comprehensive Solution for the Nineveh Plain. Lars Adaktison is a member of the European Parliament from the European People's Party. Adaktison's conference became the source of controversy following the decision by the Assyrian Democratic Movement to boycott the conference. The Chaldean Catholic Church quickly also announced a boycott followed by Abna al Nahrin and the Assyrian Patriotic Party. The pre-scheduled leadership of the Assyrian Church of the East also then chose not to participate. To understand the controversy, it is necessary to first look at the October 29, 2016 Statement of Support requested by Lars Adaktison, which a majority of political parties signed. Clause 4 of that statement asserts, we underline that the international political and practical support for a viable and sustainable autonomous province in the Nineveh Plain, granted the same power as the governorates, will be of major importance in achieving the implementation of the Iraqi cabinet's decision on 21 January 2014 to create a Nineveh Plain province. Clause 8 says, in the event of the creation of a Nineveh Plain province, we commit ourselves to forming one single self-defense force, which will cooperate with the legitimate government of our country. These two clauses in Adaktison's own document, along with other more general clauses, envision a standalone Nineveh plane tied directly to the central government. Adaktison's October 2016 statement became the basis of a political understanding. That understanding was still in place in February 2017, when he announced his intention to hold a conference on the future of the Nineveh Plain at the European Parliament. On March 6, 2017, 10 Assyrian political parties decided to make their policy demands completely clear. They signed a joint statement created by them, setting forth in full detail an agreed-upon policy framework. The March 6 joint statement provides the policy foundation for an Assyrian agenda with the government of Iraq and the Kurdistan regional government. The March 6 joint statement addresses the Iraqi prime minister, saying, we ask that you use the constitutional powers vested in your position to recognize the following demands. Using the word demands affirms that the March 6 joint statement sets forth a policy. Clause 1 states, we demand the activation and implementation of Resolution Number 16 issued by the Iraqi Council of Ministers for the creation of the Nineveh Plain Province. Clause 2 says, we call on the UN Security Council to issue a decision in order to protect the minorities of the Nineveh Plain. The UN will have the right to monitor the security situation and rehabilitation efforts, reducing exploitation and preventing the imposition of hegemonic policies across the Nineveh Plain. This seeks to remove the Nineveh Plain from the ongoing dispute between Erbil and Baghdad. Clause 3 makes the Nineveh Plain's borders a green line requiring all forces outside of their jurisdiction to withdraw. It also says, Assyrians should be enabled to defend themselves and protect their properties with the integration of all private security forces formed by minorities under Iraqi federal forces and local police. MEP Adaktison immediately received the March 6 joint statement in good faith to make it the guiding framework of the Brussels Conference. The March 6 joint statement requires the formation of a Nineveh Plain province that allows the people to gather their strength and reestablish their decisional autonomy, after which they may or may not choose to hold a referendum of their own free will. This is vital because it rejects the KRG policy of compelling a referendum on the Nineveh Plain's jurisdictional alignment. The March 6 joint statement also removes from the policy agenda any role for the Peshmerga or forces under the command and control of the Peshmerga in the Nineveh Plain. Viewers will recall 
that the Peshmerga betrayed the people of the Nineveh Plain by disarming them and withdrawing without firing a shot, leaving people to the mercy of ISIS. In April 2017, MEP Adaktison sent an open invitation for participation in his conference. On April 22nd, the ADM, in a message to Adaktison that included the other nine parties, expressed concerns about preventing bias in participation and policy. There was no positive response from Adaktison. On May 15, 2017, Lars Adaktison's chief of staff, Charlie Waymers, met with the Assyrian political parties in Iraq. He was again told that the March 6 joint statement must serve as the policy foundation of the conference. Again, Assyrian political parties did not receive a clear response. Political parties received bilateral invitations to the conference along with their traveler visa invitation letters on June 10, 2017. The ADM immediately demanded full disclosure of the policy documentation and agenda for the conference. On June 11, 2017, Charlie Weimers sent the draft policy document guiding the conference, the conference agenda, and a letter from Lars Adaktison addressing the political parties. The Brussels conference was only 16 days away when this material was finally provided. Weimers informed Assyrian political parties on June 11 that the document drafted by Europeans would serve as the basis for deliberations in Brussels. This deliberately dismisses the March 6 joint statement as if it never existed. Worse still, the draft Brussels policy document contradicted the policy framework reflected in Adaktison's October 2016 Statement of Support and the March 6 joint statement. Adaktison responded to ADM efforts to defend the March 6 joint statement by saying that he was very disappointed. And also that the conference will take place at all events. Adaktison's intentions to undermine the March 6 joint statement became clear. Adaktison's Brussels policy document, drafted by Dayong, requires a referendum in the Ninve Plain, asserting the representatives of the local councils, parties, and NGOs will elect an interim Ninve Council that will prepare the above-mentioned referendum in cooperation with the OVSE. Most alarming is that the draft Brussels document sent on June 11 makes no mention at all of the Government of Iraq Cabinet decision to create a Nineveh Plain province, as though the decision never existed. Adaktison's own October 2016 Statement of Support, which prioritized the central government's cabinet decision, was a lie. The June 11 draft Brussels document also stated, the international community needs to push for the Peshmerga and the Iraqi special forces present to deploy police and military units, such as the Zeravani of the Peshmerga, back into the Nineveh Plain. This policy seeks to restore the security status quo that existed when ISIS attacked. This is key KRG policy objective. In a letter to MEP Adaktison on June 20th, the ADM stated, any decision about what governmental structure the Nineveh Plain falls under are illegitimate until a period of time has passed whereby demographics are restored. The ADM is trying to prevent the reimposition of a referendum in the Nineveh Plain, which the March 6 joint statement took off the agenda. The ADM also stated, Security is another matter in the policy document that cannot be accepted in its current form as a starting point for deliberations, which includes the Ministry of Peshmerga Affairs in the section on creating a Nineveh Plain Command. These measures restore the pre-ISIS status quo security arrangements. Finally, the ADM repeated the message to MEP Adaktison that the bulk of core issues on the future of the Nineveh Plain were resolved in the March 6 joint statement. The International Conference can demonstrate its commitment to the principle of self-determination by respecting the agreed-upon framework 
signed on by a variety of political parties as the starting point for policy development at the conference. Adactison's Chief of Staff, Charlie Weimers, responded to the ADM on June 21st, saying, We cannot implement these changes unilaterally without proper consultation with the nine other parties. This response, that Adactison expected Assyrians to forget the March 6 joint statement and come to Brussels to restore Kurdish nationalist policy objectives to the Assyrian political agenda. Three political parties then publicly announced their boycott. On June 26, the draft Brussels policy document was leaked. Adactison's betrayal of the March 6 joint statement was made public. At that point, Nuri Kinu, founder and global leader of a demand for action, began publicly defending Adactison and the conference. ADFA announced itself to be co-producer of the conference on June 21st, and after that sought to dismiss any criticism while ADFA's DC director, Steve Oshana, used social media to indicate that the draft policy paper was the product of all 10 parties. It is unclear if Oshana deliberately intended to mislead Assyrians. June 29, 2017, ADFA announced the release of a new policy document. Upon close study, the revised Brussels policy document reflects a more sophisticated effort to kill the policy agenda at the heart of the March 6 joint statement. June 29, Brussels policy document opens with the words, further to the unified work paper signed by the Chaldean Syriac political parties on March 6 and 7, 2017. This reduces the March 6 joint statement to the status of a work paper, despite the undeniable fact that it lists a comprehensive set of demands agreed upon by the 10 political parties made to the leaders of Baghdad and Erbil. Under the heading Security, the new Brussels document says, a military coordination committee among our present militia should be formed under the supervision of the International Coalition Forces, the Central Government, and the KRG to maintain security on the Ninve Plain, pending the formation of a unified Ninve Plain Defense Force. Under the heading, Towards Self-Governance, the new Brussels document says, the US and EU should engage in a negotiation with the Iraqi central government and the KRG in order to achieve an agreement to have a referendum. The real results of the Brussels conference pushed forward by MEP Adactison, with the support of ADFA, Solix and the Duranoye, is to 1. Undermine the March 6 joint statement. 2. Legitimize a Peshmerga security presence in the Ninve Plain. 3. Bless the KRG plan of forcing a referendum in the Ninve Plain. This policy only serves the KRG's agenda. MEP Adactison lied to Assyrians with his October 2016 Statement of Support. He is ignoring the free political will of Assyrians expressed in the March 6 Joint Statement. Adactison is imposing his will in supporting a Kurdish nationalist policy agenda. He is doing this with the support of two unrepresentative Assyrian NGOs based in Europe to crush a legitimate agenda for the true benefit of Assyrians. It remains to be seen if the three political parties who boycotted the Brussels conference can re-establish complete unity on the March 6 joint statement after the damage to our unity done by the Brussels conference and its co-sponsors. There is hope because the Brussels conference does not reflect European Union policy. The conference is instead the work of one MEP supported by the European Syriac Union and a demand for action, which are two European-based Assyrian NGOs that are not considered politically representative organizations. It is clear that the policy agenda in the March 6 joint statement is a threat to others and it is under attack. Assyrians in Atra and in Diaspora need to understand 
these issues in order to resist this foreign agenda seeking to destroy our free political will.